Hello everyone and thank you for joining. We'll start in a couple of minutes. People are still uh, entering the session. Uh, just to uh, understand if all the facilities are working correctly, if someone can uh, write me in the questions uh, tool that you can hear me, I will appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you guys for uh, telling me that you can uh, hear me. So we still have two minutes, uh, but we'll uh, give some another four minutes to people to to uh, join the session, and then we'll start. Thank you. So hello everyone and thank you for attending today's webinar on increasing revenues and saving costs with UniCloud. My name is uh, Arik Rokach, I'm from Unitronics, from the UniCloud team, and I will uh, run the session today. Some of you already know me, some of you are not, so it's a pleasure to meet you all. Uh, we will discuss today ways to increase your revenues and how to save costs with your machines data and uh, UniCloud. Should you have uh, any questions, please use the uh, GoToWebinar uh, question tool here, and I will do my best to address all those questions during the session. Uh, at the end of the session, we'll have a Q&A, but... Uh, if you um, if you uh, basically drop me a line over here, I will try to attend all those questions during the session. Okay, so uh, let's start. Uh, the first revenue growth opportunity we will cover is uh, about uh, new customer types. 
for example, customers who couldn't afford buying your machines before. Uh, and now with UniCloud, the data-driven capabilities and your machine data, you can offer flexible pricing models such as pay-per-use. Uh, and now those customers who couldn't afford your machine before can afford to your services. So uh, what is pay-per-use? Uh, let's say, for example, a company that provides a water a cleaning, water perforation facilities, and this company decided to add uh, the pay-per-use business model to their existing offering, uh, where customer pays, customers pay, pay based on the volume of water uh, they recycle and use um, for a specific period of time. So, for example, uh, you basically place or position or bring your uh, water facilities uh, for three months, four months, a year near their facilities and they're using it, uh, your services for uh, a, a specific periods uh, of time. By installing the water flow uh, meters, the actual usage can be accurately measured. All this data can be sent to UniCloud, allowing for precise billing and cost uh, allocation. Or in other words, uh, now you can use the data that you collect to build the customers based, for example, on the amount of water, uh, recycled water or water that you uh, clean for them. This is one way to go. Another way to go is a subscription-based uh, model, which is similar to pay-per-use, but in a difference where now basically uh, in this model, the water recycling plan can offer its services to many customers at the same time as a, on, a, on a subscription-based package. Customer can subscribe to the water treatment services while the company, machine builders, will take care, care of the entire water perforation process. The company would provide the equipment, the maintenance, monitoring services, and ensure the water quality, while the customer pays a regular subscription fee for the services. And again, as you have all the data of how each user basically is using your machine, uh, how much water did he pull out of your machine, uh, you can charge him based on that data. Another option is uh, your product uh, variations. For example, if you're a machine builder and you have a machine that produces compost out of wet organics and dry, dry metals like cardboard, with UniCloud, you can monitor remotely the material parameters such as volume, humidity, and so on, and control their mix ratio to compose different type of compost which are better fitted to specific targets, for example, for like different type of crops, rather than just produce one type of compost that might not fill all your customers. So the machine is the same machine. You just optimize it to fit different type of different level of quality, different type of compost from the same machine. And it's all done by using the data, not anything else. Uh, and you can do it remotely. You can also decide to offer the UniCloud or uh, in other words, the capabilities of uh, Industry 4 to your install base. There are some customers that bought your machine a year ago, two years ago, the machine is quite new. They don't need to replace it. However, they're missing the connectivity to Industry 4 they cannot benefit from uh, from these capabilities. So you can take UniCloud, uh, connect their machine, uh, and, uh, and basically everything works in parallel. You don't interfere with what, uh, with what the machine is. Um... What the machine is doing. 
someone wrote to me that they have, uh, they cannot uh, hear the audio. Uh, can other can hear the audio? Please write it down in the questions. Okay, Dave, thank you very much. So I'll continue. So again, you can decide to take uh, Unicloud connected to your install base. You provide a more advanced, you upgrade the facilities, the environment, uh, the data, your, uh, the machines that your customers and the customer can be using the data in order also to provide services to their end users. Okay, because they don't really need to now to replace the machine to a new version. So it's also a possibility for a revenue growth from existing, existing uh, customers. Another way to increase your revenues is by offering your machines and services to emerging new markets where basically data and data monitoring is key. Without uh, connecting and collecting uh, data, without connecting your machine uh, to the cloud, you won't be able to deliver the product that uh, those customers are looking for. Uh, for example, uh, sustainability uh, sector, uh, with the growing emphasis of uh, sustainability and eco-friendly solution, Uniclouds allows you to leverage your data to meet, for example, the CO2 uh, footprint demands. Sustainability is about a lot of factors. How do you manage your waste? How do you manage your water? Uh, energy consumptions, uh, and so on and so on. One of the parameters, the well-known parameters that we can refer to is uh, your CO2 uh, footprint. Uh, so I took this as an example. Um, so again, with UniCloud, uh, allowed you to leverage your data to meet the CO2 footprint demands, not only in the production phase while the machine is running, but also in the setup and migrating phase where CO2 measures and data aggreg aggregated are required while implementing the government uh, regulation requirement. Also, by demonstrating the environmental benefits of your machines and services with UniCloud, you can attract environmental sensitive customers and tap into this uh, emerging market opportunity. So, for example, if you have an existing machine and you decide that you want to offer your machines to a sector that is under regulation of the government and it's not dealing anymore with any machine that is not uh, uh, environmental sensitive, you can take UniCloud, you can measure how your machine works, you can adjust, do the right uh, adjustment, and then your machine is uh, greener, let's call it like that, more environmental sensitive, and then you can offer a new fit uh, to, to address these markets. Another market uh, which is uh, similar is the biogas markets. It's part of the, in the uh, energy industry. And biogas basically is produced uh, through uh, natural decomposing of uh, organic matters, such as animal waste, food crops, or agricultural waste. A bacteria breaks down the organic matter, releases gas, which can be uh, captured and used as a renewable energy source for heating, electricity generation, or fuel, for example. UniCloud enables the collection of this critical data on the gas composition, temperature, pressure, and flow rates. The data is then can be analyzed, providing important insights and facilitating optimization of the biogas production process. So again, you can set up your biogas, uh, and I know several customers that are doing that. You can set up your biogas uh, facilities, uh, but you won't be able uh, in most of the cases to optimize the process because the biologic uh, environment around your facilities is changing all the times, right? So you can create biogas from industrial kitchens 
or big venues, but those kitchens and venues are changing, are changing their waste uh, um, uh, volume every day based on, on what they are doing, what they are hosting. So basically you need to be able to monitor the data and to optimize the process in order to make sure that you can produce uh, the right output that uh, you, uh, you guarantee to your customers. So it's, it's a dynamic environment where you need the data all the time. It's not a static one. Another uh, environment or emerging, uh, emerging uh, market is uh, renewable energy. So as you know, UniCloud uh, can collect your machine sensor data. Uh, those sensor capture in real time data on the energy production, system parameters, for example, uh, voltage, current, frequency. They can also capture the weather condition, for example, solar radiation, uh, wind speed, and other relevant factors. And the same as uh, in the biogas sample through UniCloud data analytic build-in tools, uh, operation can analyze the energy production patterns, system performance trends, uh, environmental factors, which affecting the renewable energy generation. So again, like in the biogas in, uh, uh, market, renewable energy is influenced by environmental factor, which means that it's not a static environment and you need to be adjust all the time or over every time to, to optimize the process and by asking the machine to share the data uh, or the machines to share this data with you on, on uh, through UniCloud on dashboards and reports and so on, you can use this data to optimize the process and to make sure that you can provide uh, quality services for your customers. Another way to uh, for revenue revenue growth opportunity is to expand your service portfolio. So actually, what you're doing today without developing new technology. Uh, you can enhance what you're doing today. For example, you can deliver or offer to your customer different type of uh, SLA, service agreements. Uh, like you can see all around you, you know, you go and you uh, need to select a new service and then they have, you know, a silver uh, agreement, a gold agreement, a platinum agreement, each one with his own uh, specification. So in your case, you can use the data if you're a machine builder, you can use the data to offer, for example, different type of services. Uh, one type of SLS will uh, include the remote monitoring 24-7 uh, on, uh, on the quality and uh, the performance of the machine. The other one will, uh, uh, you know, can, can uh, include the custom dashboards and automatic reporting to your customers. So by using the data and the building data, the building tool of a UniCloud platform, you can basically uh, uh, create different type of SLAs, which uh, gives you option to also to uh, to gain different, to decide how much will be paid for each one of them. And so the customer can offer, can decide what uh, he wants to, to choose. You can also use the data where you continuously monitoring your machines to sell parts and consumables. Okay, in some cases, your customers are not buying the consumables from you and you have no idea when they need to be replaced. By online monitoring, you know, you can know in advance when the parts need to be replaced, when, for example, a filter in the, in the water uh, cleaning facilities need to be uh, changed, and you can ask from your uh, marketing or from your uh, operation division to be proactive on that, call the customer, offer a new facility, a new 
new uh, new consumables and also uh, set up a meeting over there to to gain the replacement from so in that case you be, you can basically raise the amount of money from selling a uh, part and consumables by not changing anything just detect if you see uh you know issues for example in the water flow if you see, see issues in the water flow it can be a leak in the pipeline can be a block uh, in the filters can be depends on on the type of the machines that you are selling you can analyze and uh, be proactive on that one other services that you can uh, offer to your customers is uh, data analytics services okay you can uh, create reports uh, you can create reports, you can have a meeting with them, go over the quality of the water. For example, in this case, water uh, uh, perforation uh, cleaning uh, facilities, you can go over with them and even, and even uh, detect, for example, uh, your energy pool, their energy consumptions. Okay, so you can basically offer them insights that they don't currently have in order to save money in the future. The same as for reporting. Uh, UniCloud can uh, schedule, you can create reports, you can set the customer's report, can be a visual, uh, graphical report, like you can see over here, uh, the image can be data as well. So you basically you can create reports for your customers. This can be automatically created and can be sent automatically on a schedule base directly to your customer. And uh, it's a cost-saving feature because then uh, you don't need to take the data, give it to someone that need to analyze that, uh, create nice charts and so on, and then generate a report and send it to your customer. You can basically create uh, a dashboard with all this information, uh, set up a graphical presentation like you have over here, and set up uh, to send the customer this report every month, every week, every day. And this service can be charged, of course. You can charge for that. And of course, you can share the dashboards also with your customers. Okay, the fact that you they bought a machine that they're using uh, UniCloud uh, doesn't mean that they have access to the dashboard and for the information. Might be that only you as a service provider, uh, you are using the dashboards, you're using the data in order to uh, for preventing maintenance, for example, to prevent a machine shutdown. However, in some industries, especially, for example, in the industries of food and beverage, where they actually require by the regulator uh, to save a batch of every production, uh, every production batch, they are also uh, need to save the data. Basically, they need to create the data. Again, someone needs to generate the reports. They need to save it in order to prove to the government that, uh, or to the government office, uh, that they are uh, working according to the regulation that, that uh, were created. So, in this case, you can create for them uh, access and transparency for for the for the data. I know that we have one customer that I know uh, in South America that basically works with such companies in the food and beverage uh, uh, industry. And part of the requirements to work with them is uh, data transparency. So the fact that they, that he promised them uh, the required water quality is not enough. They want to see the data, they want to have access at any time to this data uh, and to monitor because if the data, if the water quality is not as they requested, uh, their products are not uh, as they defined. So data transparency, uh, dashboards that can be accessed also by end users is very important and you can charge money for that, of course. Product customization. So what is product customization? Product customization is exactly 
I actually can refer to the compost example that I gave you a few minutes ago, where from the same machine you can create different quality product, different type of quality that fits different purposes. So for example, if we take the compost machine, you can create a different mix for different crops, for example, that meets uh, the demands uh, for different crops. And it's the same machine. And if you won't have uh, you know, uh, access to data, and if you won't have access to remote controlling remotely the machine and change the parameters of how it should work now for the next uh, 20 hours or four hours, you won't be able to produce uh, more of your machine. And this is a revenue maker because you are now able to sell products to customers that couldn't use your products before. Another uh, revenue growth opportunity is basically uh, enhancing your productivity capacity or to increase your machine uptime by using preventing maintenance. And when machines are operating in their full potential, the production capability capacity of your business increases. This means that you can produce and deliver more goods or services to meet customer demand. Unicloud make it easy to use preventing maintenance and condition-based maintenance, what is called CBM, by continuously collecting and analyzing data on machines, condition, and performance. Unicloud can help you identify early sign of potential failure, for example, in the recycling or cleaning water facilities, you can monitor the water flow rate and detect changes in performance due to, for example, a potential block in the filters or leak in the pipelines. Or in other words, this allows you to proactively address issues before they escalated into costly breakdown and maximizing the machine uptime. And if I can increase my machine uptime, it means that I can produce more. At the same time, it means that I can increase my revenues. Okay, so Unicloud basically, um, I don't know if you guys understand or knows or uh, have familiar with, uh, with preventing maintenance, but uh, the difference between preventing maintenance and scheduled maintenance is that with scheduled maintenance, for example, you know that you need to treat or service the machine every three months, regardless its uh, actual uh, condition. With preventing maintenance, basically you put uh, some sensors in different places and you 24 hours seven, you listen to the machine and you detect the actual machine condition. So it's not like you are coming every three months and you assume the machine needs to be maintained. You maintain the machine, you service the machine when it needs to be serviced, not uh, on, uh, on based on a schedule time. That's a big difference between uh, between these two, uh, the two strategies. Some people also combine it together. Um, and if you can do that, you basically can uh, increase your machine uptime. So it means that you can produce more, the machine is more available for, uh, for production. Any questions uh, on the those examples that I gave to how to increase your revenues. No questions so far. And I just want to, to emphasize that everything that I just explained is based on data. So everything is data driven. Um, we are not talking about changing how your machine is currently running. We are talking about connect your machines to Unicloud and in parallel parallel without interrupting of what it's doing now, it will send your machine will send the data continuously to the cloud. And someone somewhere will look on this data and will try to understand how to save us energy cost, how they can uh, uh, you know save on materials, how they can optimize the process, and so on and so on. 
and and this is uh, this is not interrupting uh, at any time your your current production. If you don't like the process, just disconnect it, disconnect your machine from the internet, and continue to work like that. Let's move to how should uh, how can I uh, we, we cover some uh, revenues of opportunities so. Let's uh, now talk of how can I save cost with unique clouds uh, with my current operation without really uh, inventing anything, changing my machines and so on. Uh, we will do that through uh, indoor farm examples. So the first topic over here is that I can reduce my uh, operation cost, for example, the first thing is I don't need a fixed IP anymore in order to remote uh, login. Unique clouds, uh, today, if you want to log in without the cloud, you need to have a fixed IP. Fixed IP is dangerous, is not safe. Your IP is exposed on the net and someone can try to find it, which is not so hard, and try to, you know, hack your machines. Uh, with UniCloud, uh, your IP is hidden. It's not exposed. Uh, your machine is more secure over the net, and you don't have those uh, cost of your of the fixed IP. Uh, I don't know in the states, but in Europe, in each country, uh, fixed IP costs differently. Uh, so, in, if, if your if your machines are spread uh, geographic all, all over, it might be that uh, you can save a lot of money over here. And again, uh, money is not an issue over here because fixed IP is dangerous. It's just dangerous. So a lot of people today, and I uh, noticed uh, this trend in the last uh, few months, uh, are moving to a cloud just from the reason that they need to be less exposed uh, to, to hackers and so on. So the first cost saving is fixed IP. You don't need... you. you you connect your stuff to the cloud, your machine to the cloud, and the fixed IP cost just disappeared. The second option, for example, is to monitor your uh, energy consumptions. For example, so uh, with UniCloud, you can monitor your energy consumption. We are using smart energy meters or sensors installed uh, in the indoor farm uh, electricity uh, infrastructure. This meter continuously measures energy consumption at various points, such, uh, such as the uh, lighting system, heating, ventilation, air condition, motors, and uh, other equipment. And by using UniCloud's analytic features, the indoor farm can access the detailed energy consumption data over time in, through a user-friendly dashboard. Allowing, allowing the farm operator to monitor the energy uh, using pattern, identify peaks, consuming period by selecting uh, by sector or for example, per equipment. And based on this data, they can take a proactive steps to reduce their energy consumption. For instance, let's consider the lighting system. UniCloud Energy Monitor may reveal that the specific section of the farm uh, has ex excessive uh, energy consumption during uh, certain hours. By analyzing the data, the farm can identify potential energy saving measures, such as, for example, adjusting the lighting schedule uh, or implementing integrating lighting control and so on and so on. Uh, so basically data, is driving understanding the insights which lead to action which might lead to actions that basically will cost you uh, will co will save uh, make some cost saving for you another example in these farms are the motors uh, in those farms are usually they have automatic uh, motors to move the shelves to move the crops and doing uh, to open the the lighting, the the shades for outside, and so on. Everything is over here is uh, 
is uh, automated with motors, and if they are using standard motors, where uh, the energy consumption is always the same, instead of, uh, for example, Unitronics uh, VFD, uh, the variable frequency drivers, which are actually inverters, uh, motors, uh, they're losing money. So, for example, if if your data identified that those motors are a major uh, energy uh, uh, factor that consume a lot of energy, you might consider, for example, to replace these motors to a different type of motors which are less energy consumptions. Okay, I know one customer in uh, uh, in Europe that was able to save to his customer uh, one million kilowatt a year by just changing the motors over there and playing with the power metals. But the first thing he needs to do, he had to do, is to connect all the machines to the to the cloud collect the information for a period of time, one month, two months, three months, and then starting to analyze where he can contribute to his customers and how to save save us energy cost. The same idea of uh, with the material usage, uh, so by monitor the material usage consumption, uh, your operation organization can better manage their supply chain, saving on logistic costs such as storage, shipping, and so on. Another uh, place you can uh, save money is on your operation bottlenecks. And uh, when you improve uh, the time and your staff management, actually you save time for different processes, different routines. And if you can save time, you save money and you are more efficient. For example, uh, you can base on the data of that you collect and the data that you have access to, you can have shorter support sessions. Why? Because your support guy doesn't need to be depend on anyone on the other side to give him the fixed IP in order to remotely log in and to understand what's going on. In one click, he can log into the system uh, because it's you don't need a fixed IP from the other side. He can look on the historical parameters and try to understand what caused the issue that the customer is complaining. And therefore, the support sessions or the service sessions are shorter. And if they are shorter, you can, you know, uh, get more from your guy and from your staff. Uh, if you can remotely log in to your machine, you don't need to travel. So this is also a cost saving parameter. Uh, you reduce the SOS calls by keeping keep continuously monitoring uh, the actual data, the actual machine condition. We spoke about preventing maintenance. Uh, you can also streamline some of the communication uh, inside your organization and with your customer using the UniCloud event uh, automatic uh, automation management uh, tool, uh, and all those small tweaks or uh, improve in your routines, internal routines of your uh, service operation will save time and enable better management of your staff and their time. And if you can do that, you save money at the end of the day. Another way to save cost is to lower your machine maintenance cost by uh, basically conducting preventing maintenance. Okay, we already spoke about preventing maintenance, which is all about preventing your machine to reach to a point where it needs to be shut down, but it need to be, need to be serviced uh, while it actually need to 
uh, be available for production. So uh, all the preventing maintenance basically philosophy over here is that you detect all the time uh, the actual actual condition of, of the machine, of different hardware components of machine or performance uh, KPIs. And uh, you can basically know in advance that there is a developing situation that might end with uh, with the downtime of your machine. And this is something, of course, you don't want, your customers doesn't want it. So how basically we can lower the machine maintenance cost? Again, with preventing maintenance. If we can know in advance, if we treat, if we service the machine when it's need to be serviced, we can basically also uh, save on maintenance costs, save on parts and so on and so, and so on and so on. If you can basically also lower your machine cost, maintenance costs, while uh, create conducting preventing maintenance, you also uh, improve the, your equipment uh, reliability. Okay, so by uh, equipment reliability improvement, unique cloud capabilities can help identify reoccurring issue or patterns of machine failure. So by analyzing the historical uh, data, for example, those uh, indoor farms can proactively address root cost, implement corrective action, and improve the quality, the equipment uh, reliability. This proactive approach reduces the frequency of breakdown, it lowers the maintenance cost, and extends the lifetime of the machine. Okay, so this is also a, a result of using preventing maintenance. At the end of the day, you save on uh, on parts, you save on sessions, uh, your machines, uh, the lifespan is, is longer. You can use the machines for many years, more years than uh, it was first, uh, first uh, anticipated. Another option to reduce cost from what you're already doing today is to use our uh, secure remote access to basically reduce overall uh, on-site expenses. So a lot of expenses, a lot of costs are going on and necessary uh, traveling uh, on-site. Some of the functionality today you can do remotely. You don't need to go on-site. Uh, so you can do it through the secure remote access. You can do continuously remote monitoring, and you can use the historical uh, data for troubleshootings. Okay, all those small parameters can basically save a lot of money if you don't need to uh, go on site. It's also a better management for your staff, your experts are more available for other tasks and so on and so on. <clears throat> the last uh, points that I want to cover which regards to cost saving is something that um, people tend to overlook this aspect uh, is the development cost and uh, time to market. So all of the all of the uh, you know, the machine builders, uh, they are selling uh, machines, but they're already thinking about uh, the new version or the new generations of the neck machine. They are probably at the same time where they selling their machines, they're already developing to the next version, next uh, feature of the new machines. <clears throat> and why not just using the data? If you can use the data, of, and this is real data, it's not a lab data. You get the data from your customers, uh, from their web, from their sites, uh, the way they use the machine, and not based on assumption how a customer is using a machine. So why don't you take the data, give it to your R&D. For example, you want it, the new machine will be um, more energy, uh, um, will be more improved in energy consumption in 20%. Okay, 
So where you can, where do you have the information how you can tweak it to save this 20% of, uh, of its operation, of consuming the energy? Take the data, use the data in order to understand where you can tweak. Maybe the tweak is, is very simple. But if you are able to use the data and generate a new version of a machine, new generation that is more cost effective in terms of energy consumption, basically uh, this can provide you with a competitive edge in a very tough market and it will increase your sales performance. Okay, again, uh, people tend to overlook this apps aspect, but R&D development, uh, takes for some reason from a lot of times a big chunk of, of the money uh, for a company. And if you actually can take data, which is real data, it's not based on assumption or how you think your machine is being used uh, in the field, what, uh, you know, it's free of charge. If you guys are not part of the R&D, uh, uh, so please take this, uh, convey this uh, point or message to your management level or ask them to contact us uh, for more details, how you can take, save the data and, uh, and use this uh, for a better and most uh, and cost effective uh, development cost. Any questions? No questions so far. Okay, so what's next? So I gave you an example of four new growth opportunities, which has 14 options inside them. I gave you also five strategies with eight options for cost saving. What should you do next in order to start uh, Again, this, this kind of, uh, of goals. So what's next? Connect, connect, connect. Okay, without data, you cannot do anything. Maybe you don't want, don't know what you want to do with the data, but the data is there. So we have a three month free uh, trial, full trial, full functionality. Your machine is already there. The internet is everywhere. Connect your machine to the internet you're already using different tags information on your Unistream or, or different PLC that you are using, just ask the machine to send this data in parallel of its operation to the cloud and wait for a month. After a month, open the data and start look on the data and maybe you then the insight will pop up and you will understand that, hey, I see that the lighting in my factory is on half an hour every day or one hour every day after, you know, the production floor is not working anymore. So you're already saving one hour of electricity every day. Okay, so this is one simple example. I don't expect all of you to start implementing everything. Take one goal, for example, you want to understand how to save costs on your water consumption or your energy consumption, or you want to improve the way your service uh, uh, team is working by just getting all the information which is available for them in order to shorten the time in the troubleshooting sessions. And again, if they can save 20% of the time of, the, of this the service session, you already uh, you already plus uh, over here with the money. So how do you do that? Very simple. You go to unitronics.cloud, you press the start free, you enter few details of you, uh, first name, last name, there are several mandatory uh, details over here, of course, the emails and so on. You get an email, you press the validate uh, button and you can enter your account. And then you go to the, our quick help. You select how to connect PLC to UniCloud. 
and on your window, uh, this weasel will pop up and uh, will show you how to step-by-step, -step, how to connect your uh, DFE, your PLC uh, to UniCloud. Okay, very simple. Before I uh, will continue and show to those that uh, I'll show uh, UniCloud, uh, give you a quick overview on UniCloud for those who are not familiar with that, uh, with the platform, I want to take this opportunity and to pop up on your window a uh, small questionnaire. Um, it's not mandatory to participate, it's a uh, multi choice, just asking you guys. How would you think that you can increase, uh, you know, your revenues or save costs? So if you, okay, so now you should see those uh, this uh, poll on your screen. And please, uh, Whoever want to participate, I'll appreciate that. It's for me also a feedback of what's important to you guys for the future uh, webinars, so I can basically focus on a specific uh, specific category over here. And the last option is basically if you don't know what you want, if you don't uh, know what to do, uh, you can press on uh, let's talk, and I will base contact with you guys and ladies. Um, and we'll try to understand how we can uh, assist you to to start uh, start using UniCloud. So again, UniCloud it's free for three months, full functionality. You don't have any restrictions. You can use SMS. You can use emails. You can send your data from your PLCs every five minutes, every minute, every ten seconds. You can try it for three months. You can actually, uh, as I told you, let's decide that you want to. Uh, you know, uh, save on energy cost, uh, connect all the energy tags and start to collect. And after one month, uh, drop me a line and we can try to understand how to save money together uh, with your machines. So I see um, almost 40% of you already uh, answered the questionnaires. I'll give you another 10 seconds and then we'll continue. Okay, I'm going to close the window at uh, three, two, one. And I really appreciate the one that uh, feed the feedback over here. Thank you for your feedback. And again, for those who uh, want to ask me any questions, for those who has my contacts, so please just drop me a, uh, drop me a line. And for those who doesn't have access, just uh, go to uh, to our website, okay? to unitronics.cloud, go to Unitronics, contact us, fill up the form over here, write me a message. Uh, these uh, emails are come directly to me and I will, uh, I will address any, any question or demands or information you need uh, which regards to UniCloud. Having said that, <clears throat> just give you a quick overview of uh, our website. Uh, first of all, you can have over here a detailed information. What is the hardware that we are supporting? Uh, you have the pricing model. And of course, the first three months are free. Uh, if you want to know about the security, cybersecurity functionality of fundamentals, go to UniCloud, security fundamentals, and you have a details explanation over here about the infrastructure, about the two ISOs that we are certified with, uh, what is the level of security on the application level of the remote access, uh, the two and SOC and NOC uh, human being teams that basically monitoring the network all the time for cyber attacks. And uh, with regards to the ISO certification, if you need to give it, provide it to your customers, just click on that. 
and you have the certificate itself, of course, you can use it. And again, for those who doesn't uh, know UniCloud, uh, this is a public demo that we built. Uh, UniCloud basically, again, enable build of a few components, three core components. One are the dashboard. Uh, the second one is the device manager, where you manage the connectivity of your PLC, your devices, the definition of your asset or asset types. Um, uh, structure your organizations. So this is the organization management level and a very robust and easy to use the user management, which means that I can define for each user what will be his role. One can be an admin, one can do only dashboard. He's a dashboard user, which means that he only see the data, cannot use it, while the other one can do remote access. Okay? Uh, through the device manager or through the dashboard. Uh, so you, it's, it's quite easy to, to manage that. It's very easy. It's not quite easy. And again, the dashboard gallery, uh, you can create endless. There is no limitation for the number of dashboards that you can create. Each one can be di totally different. Uh, you can decide that uh, each organization in your uh, or sub organization will have a different default dashboard. You can also decide that each user will have a different default dashboard. So which means that you have few dashboards in your organization, but few roles. So it doesn't mean that your manager and your service engineer need to see the same information. Each one where they will uh, enter, the, enter the platform will see different type of information. Okay, so uh, UniCloud has two modes basically. So th these are the facilities and the quick help is over here. So I told you after you register, you go to the quick help, how to connect my PLC to UniCloud. This wizard will pop up and you choose, for example, I have a Unistream I, or I have a, a third party a smart uh, mode by space uh, a design, a device. So again, I can decide that I want to have the Unistream. I don't need to download the Unilogic application, I already have it. I don't need the application of the PLC, I already have it. And over here, basically, you have a step-by-step -step movie how to how to connect your machine, and you have the same as a PDF. If you don't like movies, you have it the same as a PDF. As soon as you connect it, the data will start to be uh, published on 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 your account. So let's see uh, what uh, what is uh, the type of uh, functionality that I can have through uh, through UniCloud. I actually designed this uh, example as a website. So for example, this uh, entry point is uh, simulating a machine builder. This one simulates the distribution channel of this machine builder. And this one simulates the customer that bought the machine from the channel manager channel uh, distribution channel so let's say uh, enter the machine builder so let's minimize the view so you can see the whole window okay so over here i can see basically what we call a uh, asset management mode so i can see that this machine builder has 10 machines seven of, seven of them are connected three of them currently has uh, critical alarms critical alerts I can see a detailed information about all those uh, 10 machines. I can see the status, which one is connected, which one is critical, has critical alarm. I can see them also uh, on a geographic map. And for example, I can see something which is more related to maintenance mode, uh, maintenance level. Uh, basically, there is kind of a business rule behind it. Show me all the machines that are over 7,000 working hours. So if my machines need to be maintained every 7,000 working hours, I can monitor this, and my service uh, department can already knows that they can, they need to uh, schedule a, a maintenance session on the customer floor, production floor. And again, for example, I can have a different type of view still on uh, asset management, I can see all my assets, all my machines, regardless where are they located geographically, 
because if you are connected to the internet, you are connected to my account, I can see you. Uh, this is a different type of uh, layout, uh, just to show you that, uh, you know, you can diverse and put different uh, version of uh, of design for your uh, for your dashboards. The same for maintenance. Over here on top of uh, working hours, I also detect that two of my machines uh, are over 50, 50 Celsius. Uh, uh, temperature is over 50. Just a number I place behind it over here. Of course, you can customize it based on uh, on your machine's uh, characteristic. And for example, a statistic one, just to show you that we can have different type of uh, uh, graphical representative, uh, uh, you know, pie charts. Uh, 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 you know, bars, and also an interactive one. For example, I want to see the parameters only for two of my machines, and I want to zoom in on specific point in time. And then I can hover, I can compare if the performance is the same. This is what we call an interlock interactive line. And the same for analytic. Uh, again, say, just to show you that each each dashboard is really easy to compose and can look uh, differently. So now, uh, let's say that I can see that two machines has critical error. Now one machine has a major alarm, and I want to drill down to the level of a specific machine. So let's, for example, take this one. It's connected. So let's just press the line over here. And now I have a different dashboard. This machine has three pumps inside. Uh, so I can detect the different uh, temperature, uh, voltage, pressure out, speed, and so on and so on. I have over here uh, all the history of the telemetry, if I want. And I can even, by pressing this small button, I can download it uh, manually to my as a backup to my uh, local computer. However, I don't really need to do that because I can automate or schedule this uh, this step uh, through what we call events, which I haven't uh, showed you yet, show you in a minute. And again, I'm still, I'm currently on on a machine specific uh, level, not on the on the asset management level. And the same, I I can go to see the maintenance that need to be done uh, for this machine. I can log in remotely. So I didn't do anything. I just click on the VNC and now it's remotely automatically log in. I don't need, I don't really need, uh, you know, a fixed IP from the other side. And if I want to optimize my screen, I can use this one. And basically I can fit to my screen. And if it's more comfortable for me to work like that. So some people work from a mobile, from a tablet, from a, from a desktop, so it's easy to work. Everyone can use the feature screen, or many people doesn't know that I can do that. I can program the, the PLC remotely without using VNC. Okay, so I can decide that, for example, the cooling room, the shock freeze room should be now minus uh, 25. Okay, so I will send this command to the BLC. Wait for this to disappear. Then click refresh. And now the temperature is minus 25. If for example, I did uh, some maintenance because it's over 7,000 working hours. After I did the maintenance of the service, I need to reset. I need to read this discounter. Let's click on that. Wait for a few seconds. Let's refresh it. And now it uh, will set up to zero. So now it will start counting. What I wanted actually to show you is that you can leverage on your uh, employee um, level of expertise which means that some operations you can enable or allow users or even your end users, your customers to do through the dashboard. 
without the need to have privilege, special privilege access or the know-how, how to, you know, move inside through the HMI. So again, uh, through the dashboard, you can also program the PLC using a very simple, uh, simple uh, interface. Uh, what I wanted to show you, I want to show you something that I didn't show you before. So I will take, for example, this one, for example, let's edit it. Okay, that's not the best uh, dashboard to show it. So let's take another one for the pump details. What I wanted to show you is an option that we have over here is to basically design uh, the layout of the dashboard per, per the device that you are using. So, so this is the desktop one. This was designed for a uh, tablet and this was designed for, uh, for mobile. So you actually can optimize how the dashboard will look like for different kind of uh, customers or clients. So if your service engineers are on the road with their mobile or their, uh, their tablets, uh, you might want to try to optimize how they see the information while you as a manager sitting in office, you can basically use it uh, like that. The last uh, thing that I wanted to show you is the event manager. And I'm not going to show you how to do this, just to explain that this is the automatic notification uh, system that we have. Uh, you can get uh, either emails or SMS based on uh, telemetry. For example, if the temperature is, for example, if pump temp is above 80 degrees, I want to get immediately an SMS. Okay, because I know that at 120 degrees or 90 degrees, the machine will shut down. <clears throat> and basically, I can basically ask the, the UniCloud to send this uh, um, SMS to a group of recipients. So I can send it for myself to my um, service engineer manager or my service manager. I can send it also to the customer or to his service engineer. So everyone is aware at the same time of a developing situation. And I spoke before about synergy and saving time of communication. This is all about it. So you can save time of communication. So this is based on uh, telemetry. You can also trigger uh, SMS or emails based on uh, alarms. So as soon as alarm is triggered by the PLC, you get an email or an SMS. It's uh, you to choose. Or you can schedule a task. Okay, for example, this one, we spoke about how you can sell reporting services to your customers. So basically, for example, if you want your daily reports to be sent to you, you select schedule. I want it to be sent by email notification. I want it to be on a daily basis every nine, every day at 9 a.m. I want to get a, a PDF report. PDF report is actually an image of your dashboard or, or a dashboard that you choose. But I also want to get the data, the raw data. And over here, you basically generate the message itself. Uh, please, this is a report on the asset 525, blah, 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 blah. You have a problem. Or this is the daily report. So actually, uh, I always said dashboards are very nice, but we are busy people. We don't really sit in front of uh, the dashboard the whole day. So the basic workflow by using UniCloud is to use dashboards, but in parallel, uh, basically set up triggers over here, set up, uh, set up automatic notification. And as soon as the automatic notification is sent to you, you can enter the dashboard and do your magic, magic in order to resolve the problem. This is probably how most of the people are using it, but for some reason I see people creating dashboard, but not necessarily using this automatic notification. It's here, it's really easy to use. And if someone needs an explanation how to use it, just go to the quick help and 
learn how to schedule your daily report, how to set up your communication lost alert, how to um, how you get your uh, PDF report or the image of uh, the dashboard that you promised to send to your customer every day. Uh, and it's quite easy to use, quite a simple flow. And as soon as you as soon as you learn how to use it, you won't stop because this is basically much more efficient than uh, you know logging to the dashboard once an hour and trying to understand what what is wrong. Okay, so this is this is UniCloud on uh, on a, on a nutshell. I just want to you know create. Or you just uh, the last really the last thing to do to show you is how easy it to de generate a dashboard. You have over here a list of uh, tools. For example, if I want to have this map, so I just put it over here. I'm not going through explanation of what I'm doing now, but this is a wizard basically. Um, click, 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 and that's it. Okay, this is it. If I want a window of remote access of a VNC, drag and drop it over here. Okay, this is it. This is how simple it is to create a dashboard. You don't really need to pay a lot of money. I always said, if you know how to use your smart mobile, experience yourself with building dashboards, after 40 minutes, half an hour, you understand the basics. You can uh, start running yourself and building your dashboards. And if you need more help, just use uh, the step-by-step -step, uh, guides over here. How, for example, to build a more detailed dashboard, how to connect between dashboards. You remember, in my example, I basically click on an icon over here and I was reroute or redirected to a different dashboard. So this is what I meant, how to connect between dashboards and keeping the parameters uh, between them. Okay. So any questions? Wait for a minute or two for the people that wants to write the questions in the questions uh, tool. If not, it's also okay. It's whether I did really a bad job and no one understand everything, anything, or I did a good job and uh, no questions. And of course, we are here to we are here to answer all your questions. Uh, regard not not necessarily now. And again, if you if you need any help, any type of help uh, with regards to PLCs and we, or with regards to UniCloud, you can always write down an email to support at unitronics.com support at unitronics.com and there is a big group over here of people that are expert within the bill with the plc connectivity with the hardware certification with the uh, programming your plc and also on the unicloud and they will answer and if, they, if uh, all your questions and if they need to drag me into the conversation uh, they are doing it um, literally sitting like two meters from, from the support team. Yeah, Ojo, I, I see your questions. Um, uh, I cannot refer to, to supply uh, timetable because uh, supplyment is uh, done by our uh, local distributors. So I'm not, I cannot refer to you know, any uh, commercial uh, or delivery information, uh, you should basically ask your uh, local distributor. I'm sorry for that. Okay, as there are no uh, questions over here, I would like uh, to thank all of you that uh, bear with me for the last uh, hour or so. It was a bit longer than I expected, but uh, thank you very much uh, for keep uh, keep uh, keep logging to the session. And um, everyone that basically registered, 
uh, to the session, we'll get uh, we'll get a recording of the session. And again, if you have any more questions, please um, please let me know. Thank you very much, and have a great day.